Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on creating reptilian scales via sculpting in Blender 2.5. My name is Jonathan Williamson and the method that we're going to be doing today is actually using alpha maps with the sculpt system with custom brushes to create a very nice scale effect. This is very good if you're creating any kind of reptilian creature with, uh, with sculpting or anything like that. And the same technique can actually be applied to just about anything with sculpting. It's one of the methods to creating lots of very fine details that would be very difficult to sculpt manually. So this, is, this tutorial is actually going to be using a combination of Photoshop and Blender. So the first step is we're going to go ahead and create a scale alpha map in Photoshop. So I'm just going to switch over and I'm using Photoshop CS3. Pretty much any Photoshop, GIMP, um, probably even Paint Shop. Pretty much any painting application will do because all we need to do is create a black and white image. And so I'm just going to hit Control N to create a new one. And we'll just name it uh, Reptile Scales underscore Alpha. And I'm going to create 250 by 250 pixels at 72 DPI and RGB color. And click OK. OK. And now the technique that we're going to do is actually very, very simple. We're, we're not going to go real in depth in terms of getting really fine details. But we're going to create something that will be sufficient for showing the technique. First thing I'm going to do is just hit Alt Delete to fill the background with black. And then I'm going to go ahead and click down here and create a new layer. And on this layer, right in this, right about the center of my, uh, excuse me, right about the center of my, uh, excuse me, uh, my document, I'm going to create just a solid white circle. So I'll just hit X to flip my colors here. And then using the marquee tool, I'm going to just hold down Alt and Shift and drag out and create a just a regular circle. Something about this size will work. And then I'm going to hit Control Delete or Alt Delete and fill that with white, and then hit Control D to deselect. Okay, so this is the basics of our scale. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Hit Control Shift S because I want to save it as a PNG under Sculpting Scales. And we'll go ahead and just delete this first file that I did as a test. And it's going to be Scales Alpha One and save. Okay, and click OK. And I'm going to switch over to Blender real quick because what I want to do is before going in and creating all the scales in Photoshop, I want to show you the process as we go along and then each step in Photoshop show you how it improves workflow in Blender. So the first thing that we need to do is go over to the Modifiers panel and I'm just going to use the default cube here and click Add Modifier, Multi-Resolution and let's just hit Subdivide a few times. We'll just take it up to say level 7 which takes us right up to 98,304 polygons. Very nice amount for doing this test. We may even subdivide it one more time, but we'll wait until we see whether or not that's necessary. I'm going to switch out of perspective mode by hitting 5 on my number pad, and then switch over to sculpt mode down here. And if you obviously, you can go ahead and just start sculpting now, but that's not what we want to do. Instead, we're going to go ahead and add a new brush. Now, keep in mind that the method that I'm going to be using, well, not the method, but the way that brushes are handled in this tutorial is based off of version, um, one of the recent builds, 25700. So using Blender 2.5 Alpha 0 from Blender.org, will, it will work for this method, but it's going to be done a little bit differently because the brush system has seen some updates. So I do encourage you to grab the latest build from GraphicAll.org. Uh, you can download generally for just about any operating system, Mac, Windows, and Linux primarily. And it will allow you to get the most recent updates, particularly with the sculpting system, which has seen a lot of changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to hit the plus sign here and add a new brush. And we'll just call this Scales. Very creative. And then what I want to do is under the, I need to do a couple things. First, under Texture, let's go ahead and click New. And then we'll go over to the Textures panel here and click on Brush to show the brush textures. And this workflow, I do believe, is set to change, but the, the basis is still the same. It'll just be a matter of where you access each of these things from. But we want to go ahead and change the type to an image. And then we'll just click Open. And I'm going to go to my recent, which is Sculpting Scales. And you'll notice the thumbnail hasn't updated here. This was an old image that I was doing some testing with based on a real photo. But this is actually the image. I'm not sure why Blender won't update it, even with the Refresh button. It must just be a bug. But we'll just go ahead and click open. And you can see it pops up here with just our straight white circle. And then it pops up here. And so now if we just click draw, we'll, you can see what we're getting. 
Well, this isn't very, very exciting yet. So I'm going to go ahead and first off hit F to scale up my brush. And you can see that it shows your, your image in the actual brush. And so anything that's white is being told to be sculptable. Anything that's black is transparent. And so that's why, you know, pretty much any painting program will work as long as you can draw in black and white. Which, of course, is going to be just about every, if not every, application out there. I'm going to go ahead and toggle this down to get a little more. And we can go and hide the texture now, so we don't need it. What I need to do is now click on Tool, or excuse me, not Tool, Stroke, and we're going to enable Anchored. Because you'll notice right now, if we just left-click once, it doesn't do anything. And this is actually a problem, because for scales, we don't want to have to draw like this, particularly when using an alpha mat, because it's just going to layer them one over the other and get this exact effect that we're seeing here, which isn't any good. I am going to go ahead and subdivide one more time, by the way, just to get a little bit more detail. Okay, so this isn't any good right now. So what we need to do, actually, is use the anchored option, which you can either click here or just hit A on your keyboard. And what this allows you to do is left-click and drag and just bring up your alpha map like this. And you can even rotate it to fit any way you want, drag in and out to scale it up, and then just to confirm it, just release your left mouse button. And then you can do this as many times as you want. You can overlap. Anything that you want to do, very, very handy tool and works really well for what we're going to be doing. So with that, using this technique, we're now going to switch back over to Photoshop and do a little bit more with our scales. The key thing with the scales that we need to realize is we need this to be able to be um, overlappable and repeatable. And what I mean by that is we need to be able to draw one scale on top of another without seeing all these edges here, because you don't want to have to go in and smooth these all out manually. So what you can actually do, or what we're going to do, is let's just control left click on our circle here. And then just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and go down to Select, Modify, and Expand. To expand my selection, we'll just do it by two pixels and click Enter. It just gives us a little bit of a margin to be safe. And what I'm going to do is add a gradient to this from black to white to hide much of what we're seeing here. And so let's just pull up our gradient option here, which is G on your keyboard. And you may need to toggle G or hit Shift G to switch to the gradient versus the paint bucket. And then I'm going to hit X to swap my colors once more. And you'll notice that I'm using the black to transparent gradient rather than the black to white, because I don't want to fill the rest of my circle. And so the key thing here is we need the top to be completely transparent, such that we can create the effect of overlapping scales. And so I'm just going to left click and drag right about the center and hold down Shift to make it straight and something like that. And maybe we'll do just a little bit more. Or you can start higher up and scale down to get a little bit of a smoother effect. Maybe do this a couple of times until it looks about right, which that looks pretty good right about there. So let's go ahead and save this again. And I'm going to real quick here just go ahead and save a, a PSD version of this just in case something were to crash. And then we'll go ahead and save a PNG. And we're going to overwrite that. Yes and yes. And then in Blender, all we need to do is simply click the Reload button right here in the texture, and it'll reload it. And then we can click and draw. And now you'll notice that we're not seeing any sculpted effect on the top, which then allows us to just put as many scales on top of each other as we want to get that scaled effect. So this is very, very cool. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and divide my cube one more time, just so we get a nice, smooth effect. And really, if you were doing this on a character, you would not be starting from a cube. As I think we've discussed before, or somebody has discussed before, there are better methods to actually get reach a higher poly count. Since right now, you'll notice that we're at 1,572,864 polys, which is quite a bit. It really is. But to get a lot of small details, it's not going to be nearly high enough. Okay, so this is working really well. But now, we don't want to have to draw every single scale by hand. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a triangle pattern. And we'll just use our, our cursor tool by hitting V. And then let's just hold down Alt on our layer and drag it over to about halfway up and halfway over. And then we'll do that one more time, like so. And that'll get a nice scale effect, at which point we can go ahead and hit Control S and Control Shift S to save another PNG. Save that, save as. And yes, and OK. And you may, I don't, I'm not actually sure if 2.5 is supporting uh, PSD files right now. I know it used to, but I always like to use PNGs just because there is no question about it whether or not it'll work. So we'll go back to our texture panel and click refresh. And now we can just 
left click and drag, see that. And so this, now having the triangle pattern, allows us to really draw on any scales that we need to very quickly and also saves us a good amount of time. And so you'll notice also with the triangle effect, and since we have our scales fading out, we can even do scales from, from the bottom or top. And you know, we may need to go in and do a little bit of smoothing, which you can do real quick here. Just hit S to switch over to your smooth brush and then do a little smoothing there, maybe a little bit there, and just very quickly smooth out those scales. Or you can go back to your scales brush that we created and keep going. So this is a very easy technique that works very, very well. It can just be a little finicky to get it working right. And what I've just found, you know, I did a bit of research and development and whatnot to test out this, this practice, because I've never really actually done this before much, because I don't do a whole lot of sculpting. Um, and what I did find is that the triangle method, which is the three, three scales, works the best uh, to allow you to fill in just about anything from any area. You know, you can obviously always go in and do more, but this is what I found to work really well. And in fact, let's go ahead and just for the sake of demoing, let's go in to our brush here and let's add a little variety to make these scales a little more interesting. Because right now they're, you know, they're pretty boring. So the first thing, let's go and hit just Control E twice to merge those layers down. And let's go to Filter and Liquify. And this will pull this up and allow us to distort these a little bit just to get some irregular shapes. And so I'm going to go ahead and, first off, you'll notice that my window's a little small, and that's an unfortunate thing, just based on my screen size. And so let's actually, oh, here we go. We can zoom in by holding down Control and left-clicking. And then we can use our brush size. You notice that's a little small. So let's just increase our brush size here, about like this. And we can just add some distortion to these scales, make it a little more interesting. And ideally, you know, if you were doing a, a full character or something with thousands upon thousands of scales, you would probably want to create a couple of these different brushes such that you could add some good variety and it wouldn't just be the same pattern over and over again. Of course, you know, with that number of scales, you could also probably get away with, with only using two or three, uh, and most people would probably never notice, particularly something that's normally this small in most characters. Okay, well, this is cool. That's, add, that's a little bit of variety, but let's do one more thing. Let's just zoom in here, and let's bring up the, the Dodge tool. And we are going to, first off, scale our brush way down, since you'll notice it's huge right now. And I'm just using the left and right bracket to scale it down. And let's add a kind of a ridge to this. Um, a lot of scales tend to have a ridge along here and a little bit of a highlight around the edges. So let's just do that real quick. And so I'm just going to bring up my brush panel, shape, dynamics and I'm going to turn the size jitter to fade just such that I can just go like this and let it fade out but it's not fading out quite quick enough just yet okay so we're going to set this maybe down to 15 there we go and I'm going to turn my exposure up just a little bit maybe a little bit more and we'll turn this down to say 10 and maybe our brush size down a little bit Okay, now we need to turn that back up. We'll go up to 15 again. And I realize that a lot of this is Photoshop based, not Blender based, but it very much ties in together um, the, two, the two programs. Since much of your texture work, a lot of times will be done in Photoshop or in something similar. So knowing how to do these kinds of things is very, very beneficial. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just add just, I'm doing this with a mouse, so I don't have my tablet hooked up, so it's a little bit finicky. I'm going to add just a little bit of an extra highlight to this ridge, which won't necessarily show up um, except with very, very high poly counts, but let me go ahead and do it regardless. A little bit more in the center of this ridge. It's more, I highly encourage you to use a tablet unless you are very, very adept with a mouse. I have seen people that have done outstanding paintings with a mouse, but if you have a tablet, I highly encourage it. 
I'm just going to bring in the smudge tool a little bit to smooth these out. There we are. So we'll just leave that as is, and then we're going to save it, Control shift s overwrite our previous PNG. Yes, and OK. Now let's take that back into Blender, and we'll hit Refresh. And then let's go ahead and just pull these in. And so you can see just that little bit, particularly at a small scale, can really help add to the final effect that you're going for. You know, you can compare these two and see which one you prefer. If you're going for a little bit more of a cartoon effect, then you may want just the straight smooth ones. Uh, if you're going for a little more realistic, you might want something like this, or even you know, maybe pull on some photos to help influence your, your technique or your, your brush. I do warn you that if you're going to use photos, to be very, very careful, because you need to get rid of a lot of the small details in order to uh, make it work well in Blender, simply because otherwise it's going to make, rather than making a nice, very, very detailed scale, it's hard to get a high enough resolution on your sculpt to actually make use of that, and it'll just come out uh, gnarly and, and gross. So just be aware of that. But so you can see the effect that this has. It works real well. The same technique, as you may have guessed already, for those people that are interested in architecture or just more hard body modeling, is very, very effective at creating tiles or like a, uh, roof shingles. Obviously, you might need to be um, a little painstakingly tedious and whatnot in order to get them all the same size, but it does work quite well. So I hope you found this helpful and can see some advantages to it, perhaps in your own workflow. Uh, I know it's, it's a lot of fun, and definitely once you start, uh, once you start using Alpha Maps as brushes, you will, in many cases, never want to go back and use just a normal brush again because the, you know, the results that you can get using Alpha Maps to help influence the design are very, very substantial and work really, really well. And obviously, this is just a very, very simple example. You know, you could do all kinds of things. That's how a lot of people get things from uh, pores to even wrinkles in skins, particularly in applications like ZBrush that have a very refined sculpting uh, tool set. Alpha, alpha brushes are very, very important and used very, very heavily. So once again, uh, my name is Jonathan Williamson, and if you have any questions on this tutorial, feel free to leave them in the comments, support, uh, submit a support ticket via our support page. And once again, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.